Hope you're having a good day, good enough day. I have this practice with some friends of mine and with people in my life of saying like, just have a, have a, have a good enough day or an okay day. Like enough of this, like have a great day. I hope you're having a great day. Like, some pressure. So I'm grabbing a good enough day. And um, this Facebook Live is going to be um, a little bit different than my past ones if you've been watching them. Um, I've done a lot of like the practical and the pragmatic of like here's some things that you can do. Um, like concrete, measurable things that you can do. Um, I just realized that you probably couldn't hear any of that because my headphones were plugged in and I wasn't actually using them, so fuck. Um, always something. Um, I'm sure you can hear me now. So I was just saying that this Facebook Live is going to be a little bit different than the ones that I've been sharing um, because I'm really coming, I'm sharing a different part of my medicine, myself, my work in the world, I've tended to sort of hang out in the practical and the pragmatic because it's, it's easier in some ways and I'm good at it and I like it, you know, like breaking things down. You heard it. Okay, great. Thanks though. Um, uh, breaking things down into accessible, digestible, um, parts and pieces is, is something I'm really good at. It's something I actually really enjoy. And it's not everything that I do and certainly not everything that I want to be doing with myself and with my clients and with the courses that I teach and with my life. And so um, I'm going to talk about some things that are um, not in that arena. And the, the topic is that your body is a doorway. Your body is a doorway. And um, your body's a doorway. You know what? I need to do one quick thing here. I'm just going to push pause for a second, talk amongst yourselves. Um, okay. So before I actually go into what that means, what it, what it means that your body is a doorway, um, what I mean when I say I'm going to move into something, into the things that are more um, soul-centric rather than practical and pragmatic, I just, I want to share why I've not, why I've not shared these things, why I've sort of kept them back here. And it really... Uh, it goes back to being a fucking kid, like all of this stuff, right? So I had some experiences, and I won't go into detail, um, but I had some experiences as things that I remember as an adolescent when um, my depth, my questions, my sort of seeking and wondering about the world and myself was like looked at like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, this makes no sense. No one cares about this. Like I was made fun of, um, and rejected and like teased for being this way. And, um, and so I just was like, okay, great. No one, no one wants this. I'll just keep it to myself. And, and I also learned, um, or came to believe that for, me to be loved, I had to be useful. So there's this way that I've shown up in the world throughout my life as like very competent and confident and I can handle myself and take care of myself, which is actually quite true. And it's not the whole story, right? Like I certainly need help and need support. And when I'm allowing all of that, there's so much more possible. And so I've had these experiences in the last couple of months of these stories um, really starting to break down. These stories that nobody wants these parts of me. Nobody wants this depth. No one's interested in it. And that I have to be useful to be loved or being just like chiseled away slowly. It's not a like instant process, but it's happening. 
and um, and so so that's how I've gotten here. This this like depthful, soulful, um, nonlinear, paradoxical. Um, like hard to find words for in a like logical linear sense has been around with me since as long as I can remember. And she certainly shows up in situations with clients and she shows up in situations with friends and community where it feels really safe, but I don't ever lead with her. I wait for an invitation. And so in the last couple of days really and then today with this particular Facebook live I'm taking a risk and and letting her lead like she is now in the driver's seat and she is uh, she's the one that's gonna talk to you today right and um, it sounds weird I don't have like multiple personalities I want that to be clear it's just these different parts right like we all have these different parts of ourselves and um and and they can seem at odds with each other and um, including them all and knowing which one to lead with at any given moment can be a really beautiful part of the journey of being human. So, um, so the body as a doorway. So what I've learned this happened to me spontaneously, and, and I wrote about this and shared an article about it yesterday, which I'll put in the comments, but I had this spontaneous experience about seven years ago with a partner where as I came, it feels so vulnerable to talk about, just, it's like, wow. Um, it's talking about sex in a very different way. But as I came, I was, I had a vision. So the the waking world, the day world melted away. And I found myself in this vision. I was no longer like, I, you know, in that weird way of altered states. Like I knew that I was still in this particular room with my partner at the time. And, but then most of me was in this other experience and, um, and this vision was incredible. I'd never done psychedelics at this point. So I'd never really had any experience like this. And it was just like, I was in awe of what I was seeing. Um, and I won't describe the details of it here, but it was a whole other world. It was sort of like an Alex Gray painting. If you've seen those where it's like, it's, it's depicting something, his art, Alex Gray's art depicts something that's like the feeling of what we feel. And it was very much that. And it was just this awe and wonder at the connections that we make with other human beings. And that each and every single one is miraculous because the chance of them occurring is, slim. the chance of us meeting any one person is so slim. And then of us having a connection with them and getting to explore that is even more slim. And so it's amazing. It needs to be celebrated and and revered and um, and like worshipped even at, at, at the very least acknowledged that these things are significant these meetings are significant and so that whole vision happened and then it slowly faded away and I was back with my partner and I was crying and I was having this whole thing and it was like it, it was just it was the most like natural simple thing and I had no idea what had happened. And it's continued to happen in my life. It sort of comes and goes in waves and in phases um, with myself and with my partners. And, and it took a couple of years for me to find answers to what had happened. I wasn't seeking them out. I was so okay with what was happening um, and didn't need to understand it. But a couple of years later, I learned some of what was going on, right? And some of it is um, it's like uh, what we call in the, um, I don't know if there's a, wow, stumbling over my tongue, the Animus Valley Institute down in Durango, um, and they do work all over the world, I think at this point, but um, 
in that body of work, they talk about soul encounter, which are those moments oftentimes in altered states of consciousness, whether it's through medicine or, um, you know, dancing and movement or sex. I don't know that they actually talk about it in that way, but that is one of the ways our sex and our pleasure through our physical bodies is one of the ways that we can access this um, vision quest ceremony. Um, there's tons of them. There's a lot of different ways to come into soul encounter. But what I realized was happening was that I was spontaneously having this experience through my body. And then over the last couple of years, as that, as that recognition landed, I realized that, wow, I could take different practices and actually cultivate this and make space for it and, and, um, and invite it in more and more and actually use it to know and understand more about myself, about the world, and about my place in it. And it's so remarkable because all you need is your own body. It doesn't take anything else than that. You can do it by yourself. You can do it with a partner. You can do it with a group of people if that's your sort of thing. Um, but, but bringing ceremony and magic and ritual and soul into your sexual experience and then using your sex and your pleasure to um, encounter soul and spirit and um, prayer and intentions and all of that is it's like it's so fucking cool and I highly recommend it and um, and if I got to have my way in the world I would be primarily doing this and talking about this with people. Like this would be the main focus of my life and my work. And I think it's probably going to move in that direction, um, which feels exciting and scary. And, um, and this feels like some of the first steps. So I want to invite you, if you're still listening, watching this, to try this on your own. So you might, sort of the simplest way to do it, so there's, I'll offer, I'll give you two different options. So one way is to set up a self-pleasure session um, or a session with your partner, um, lovemaking session with a partner that it, that has some element of ceremony where you set up the space, you maybe light a candle or whatever it is, however it works for you to call in and set up sacred space. And it doesn't matter what your beliefs are about the world, what your spiritual or religious beliefs are. It doesn't matter because this is, this is something different, right? Like this isn't a religious thing or a spiritual thing. Like this is you and your body and the life force and energy and eros that moves through it. And so, so set up sacred space for yourself and set an intention. So you might, um, you might be asking a question. You might have a question that you're holding, um, which could be, you know, like, why am I here? Why am I here? Um, that's a big one. Um, but you can ask something more specific, but something simple. Ask a question and then move into self-pleasure, whatever that looks like for you, and see what happens. And treat everything that occurs, every sensation, every experience, everything you hear, see, taste, smell, as an answer to that question or an answer to that prayer. That's one thing that you can do. Another way to play with this is to um, come up with an intention, like something that you're wanting to call into your life or something that you are wanting to shift about your beliefs about yourself. And so I hate this term, but some version of an affirmation, right? And a really beautiful one to play with is, um, is around pleasure. Like we have so many stories about our pleasure, especially our sexual pleasure. And so um, using, coming up with, with some nourishing statements 
about your pleasure. Like my pleasure is okay. <laughs> like it might be that small and simple to start, right? Like my pleasure is okay. My pleasure, pleasure is safe. Um, uh, I can't think of any more off the top of my head, but coming up with a few, like maybe three at the most. And then again, setting some sort of ceremonial space, sacred space, and then moving into a self-pleasure session. And as you're self-pleasuring, speaking these phrases back to yourself. There's a way that when we're in the like open, unguarded state of pleasure, that these statements, these nourishing things seem to get in more deeply. If you have a partner or if you're working with a somatic sex educator, um, doing a version of this with them can be even more impactful where you could be making love with your partner and each have a few things that you're saying to each other and just be repeating them back to each other as you're making love or asking them to just touch you or be with you when you are self-pleasuring and, and have them whispering those words in your ear. Um, it, it's, ugh, I don't even know, like, until you've tried it, um, I don't even know how to describe what it's like, but there's, oh, there's like a, a permeability and an openness that's, that's very similar to being on different kinds of medicine, where it feels like it reorganizes and reorients on a cellular level our bodies and our experience of the world. So that's two different ways to play with this, um, to play with your body as a doorway into so many things, right? I'll leave um, links to some documents that lay out those different practices so that you can download them and use them and play with them yourself and talk about them with a partner or with friends. Um, and if you have any questions, certainly feel free to comment here or send me an email. My email is alyssa at thiseroticlife.org. And then I'm offering a program for women starting the end of February that is um, really, it's a group, it's not a program, so it's a relatively small group of women um, to both learn about different practices that you can take on to cultivate this experience, this body as a doorway experience, um, and then also to share these experiences in community and learn from one another and receive reflection from one another and really deepen into that, um, to this way of being, this, co this combining of soul and eros. And um, I'll put a link to that as well, but it's called Doorways to Soul. And um, if you feel interested, please reach out and let me know, or just head over to the page and sign up. Okay, that's all for today. See you next week, same time, 3 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, and if you have questions or if you have things that you want me that would be helpful for you, like be totally selfish here. If you have a question about your body, about your partner's body, about sex, about um, your body as a doorway, about all the different things here, please send them my way, personal message, email, whatever, because um, I love responding and answering um, questions in this way. Okay, have a great day, everybody.